All right, let's get to today's question. Um, some of you may be looking at this question and wondering, like, wow, this is this seems relatively simple. And believe it or not, you actually will get questions like this on the MCAT. I can't tell you how many times I've seen these questions that rely on these things called oxidation numbers. Um, and so today we're going to go over the hallmark of these. And, you know, if you already know how to do this, feel free to skip to the end, figure out what the answer is. But some of the tips I'm going to give you, I think, will be very imperative uh, moving forward. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there are chemistry section on the MCAT. Um, the chem section uh, does rely a lot on this thing like that, the thing that I like to call redox. Okay, and the reason why the chem section relies a lot on redox is because, believe it or not, a lot of the reactions that happen in your body are redox reactions. And so, so the reason why the MCAT um, talks about redox a lot is because body reactions are based on redox. Like respiration is a redox reaction, photosynthesis is a redox reaction, all of these things are redox reactions. So by understanding redox reactions, you can actually understand your body's reactions. But unfortunately, that also means that you have to understand oxidation numbers, because oxidation numbers are a key subset of redox reactions. So with that, let's just get straight into today's video. Um, before we even answer this question, which says, what is the oxidation number of chromium in sodium dichromate? Um, and so this is sodium dichromate, and it's asking you what's the oxidation of chromium, which is right over there. Um, and so, there's different ways to approach this. I have a few rules that I'm going to go ahead and give you, uh, and they're, for me, have proven to be very foolproof. So let's just go straight into it. Um, the rules for oxidation numbers, I have four, which is much better than most of these things I've seen online, which have like 10 or 11. I have four. So whenever you're doing oxidation numbers, then the first thing you want to remember is that the oxidation number for alkali metals in a compound is always plus one, okay? Always plus one. So when you have something like sodium chloride, sodium is an alkali metal, so it's plus one. Chlorine, or chloride, therefore, has to be minus one, okay? When you have something like sodium sulfide, sodium is always plus one, okay? Um, the, other, the other part that I'm also gonna get out of this is that alkali earth metals in compounds Believe it or not, alkali earth, and if you don't know your metals yet, you should learn your family of metals, but alkali earth metals, oh god, not alkali metals, alkali earth metals, which is um, row two, oh no, column two. Um, these guys, when they're in compounds, um, they're always plus two, okay? I believe it or not, this is almost always true. This is the most foundational rule, okay? So things like magnesium chloride. In this case, magnesium is an alkali earth metal, and so magnesium will have an uh, oxidation number of plus two. So that's the first rule we always want to take into consideration. And the reason why it's your first rule is that because the, that's the first thing you should be doing. The second rule, the second rule for oxidation numbers is the oxidation of hydrogen is almost always, so there are exceptions to this, 99% of the time, the oxidation of hydrogen will be plus one. And it's going to be plus one when it's covalent compound. Okay, and uh, you'll see what I mean by this. On the other hand, if hydrogen is found in an ionic compound, which is not as often, but you know, 1% of the time it might be found in an ionic compound, it's minus one. Okay, uh, what do I mean by this? So let me give you an example. Remember something like lithium hydride? So this is an ionic compound, right? And because it's an ionic compound, remember rule number one. Rule number one says lithium, because it's an alkali metal, is plus one. And therefore, in this case, hydrogen is actually minus one. But this is very rare. You don't see things like lithium hydride very often. Most of the time you see something like HCl, or maybe you'll see something like HF, okay? These are covalent compounds. They're bounded by covalent bonds. So in this case here, most, 
Here, H is plus 1. Therefore, chlorine is minus 1. Similarly, here, H is plus 1. And chlorine is minus 1. Okay. Next one. Let me move to the next rule. This is the penultimate rule. Here, the oxidation of oxygen is usually minus 2. Okay, usually, almost always, the oxidation of oxygen is minus 2. The only exception you should remember, or maybe you don't even have to remember it, if you follow my rules, you don't have to remember any exceptions, things like H2O2. But remember, if we're following our series of rules in H2O2, you would know that H2O2, because it's a covalent compound, the value of H, um, H2 is going to be plus 1, right? And that would ultimately make this part plus two because there are two hydrogens and therefore the oxygens have to be um, a negative one each oxygen has to be a negative one so that way together this whole thing is minus two to sum up to zero right so that's the that's the penultimate rule and this is the exception in this case oxygen actually has a uh, oxidation number of negative one but majority of the time oxygen is negative two okay this is the one exception I just wanted to show you last but not least the last uh, thing you should remember for oxidation numbers is that the sum of the oxidation numbers is equal to the overall charge. And we've already been doing this, right? In all of the examples I've given you, I've told you, look, in H2O2, um, we added up the, the oxidation number of the hydrogen and they added up the oxidation number of the oxygen and you end up getting the zero and you get zero because H2O2 is an uncharged molecule okay think about something as simple as lithium chloride lithium is plus one chloride is minus one and when you add those two together you get an overall charge of zero because lithium chloride does not have an overall charge okay so with that being said let's go back to our initial example. So if we go back to our original example, which is asking for the overall um, oxidation number of chromium, let's follow our rule. Rule number one says that we have to go to our alkali metals. And in this case, rule number one would tell us that the alkali metals in this case are going to be plus one. But because we have two sodiums, the overall charge here is going to be plus two, right? Similarly, rule number two we're going to ignore because we have no hydrogens here, but if we did have a hydrogen, we'd take that into consideration. Now let's move on to rule number three. Rule number three says the oxidation number of oxygen is usually negative two unless it's H2O2 um, or another exception with hydrogens. But because there's no hydrogens, we can make a safe assumption that each oxida oxygen here has an oxidation number of negative two. And if that's the case, the overall oxidation number of oxygen here is negative 14. So now we have to figure out the oxidation number of chromium here. Remember, the sum of the oxidation numbers has to add up to the overall charge. And here, the overall charge is zero. There is no charge on this molecule, right? So if we assume that the oxidation number of the two chromiums is x, then you can say negative 2 plus x minus 14 is equal to zero. And that would give you negative 16 plus x Oh, no, no, this is plus 2. So this would give you negative 12, right? Negative 12 plus x is equal to 0, and that would mean that x is equal to positive 12. But remember, x is representing two chromiums, right? It's representing two chromiums. That means the charge on one chromium is plus 6. And so the answer to this question is that the oxidation number of chromium in this compound is plus 6. All right? And so if you can go back, I believe that was answer choice E. And that's the video. And give it a big thumbs up if you appreciated it. And see you guys in the next one.